And now it's time for the Solana Post Sports Friday Night Preview with Tyler Henry and Devin Haney. Hello, everyone, and welcome back in for another installment of the Salina Post Sports Friday Night Preview Show. Tyler Henry joined here by Devin Haney as we take a look at the entire area scoreboard this week, checking in on all 11 of our area teams. Boy, it was a wild, rainy, stormy Friday night last week, but hopefully things looking a little bit more clear. And as the temperatures cool here in the fall, teams looking to heat up across the gridiron. Salina Central has a big game coming up here tonight. They will return home to take on a ranked power in Goddard Eisen. Eisenhower. Salina South, meanwhile, will be on the road. They're going to have a tall touch task as they take on the Hutchinson Salt Hawks. Abilene will travel to St. George to take on Rock Creek in our Salina Post game of the week. Chapman is also going to return home. They will take on the Tigers of Clay Center. Southeast of Saline hits the road. They will take on Kingman coming your way later tonight on KINA. Ellsworth is in a scrap with Lions. Sacred Heart travels to Valley Heights. Minneapolis will take on Norton and Bennington will hit the road looking for the first win of their season at Republic County. Meanwhile, on the eight-man scoreboard, the Elseline Cardinals in a battle of the birds will take on ranked Canton Gal and Solomon, still looking for their first victory, will take on Central Plains. Devin, you look at this slate of games, obviously some really fun matchups this week. What's popping off the page at you? Tyler, I want to see if um, Salina Central can keep the Mustang train rolling. You know, they, they go out on the road last week, had a game cut short because of weather. They still get the victory. They come back now to Salina Stadium 2-1. and one, And as you mentioned, a ranked Goddard-Eisenhower team. Our partners at K-Preps currently have Goddard-Eisenhower ranked 4th in Class 5A. They got a victory last week over Newton, 49-7. to This is a rushing attack, though, that Salina Central is going to have to find a way to slow down. Two backs last week for Goddard Eisenhower that went over 100 yards. They can also throw the football. And this just isn't something that's going on this year with Eisenhower getting this 3-0 start. Goddard Eisenhower, since the beginning of last season, 13-2. and So this is a team that has been very hot as of lately. This will be a good test and a good win if the Mustangs can get it here tonight. Well, and from one of our biggest schools to one of our smallest schools, there is an instant classic brewing down in Brookville, El Saline and Canton Galva. That's a Canton Galva Eagle team that comes into this one. They are one in two after they took a tough loss earlier this year. The Cardinals in the same boat, but two teams that are scrapping it out for a better spot in the K-Preps top five. And then one more matchup that I don't necessarily want to sleep on, at least not for area importance, is going to see the Bennington Bulldogs. They got put in kind of a tough spot. They were forced to move back up to 1A from 8-man. They were one over the enrollment cap, but they've got an awesome Awesome chance to pick up a victory in Republic County as they travel to take on Repco. That's the Buffaloes hosting Bennington. That game coming your way a little bit later tonight. Mentioned before, but our game of the week this week, we'll see the Abilene Cowboys on the road at St. George to take on the Rock Creek Mustangs. And when we come back, we'll hear from both head coaches, Shane Sieben of Rock Creek and Brad Nix of Abilene. Those conversations, when we return, you are listening to the Salina Post Sports Friday Night Preview Show, and it's right here on KINA. With record-breaking enrollment, great new facilities, and top-notch activities, Kansas Wesleyan's the place to be. Whether you want to study nursing, elementary education, criminal justice, or social work, our academic programs will open doors for your future, all while you participate in activities like music, theater, or athletics. Learn more about why KWU's the place to be by visiting kwu.edu. That's kwu.edu. The hours of drills, the pre-dawn workouts, the hundreds of laps. It takes hard work, passion, and drive to do what you love. When you're sidelined by injury, Salina Regional Sports Medicine is just as committed and works just as hard to get you back in the game. Salina Regional Sports Medicine, 785-452-7366. SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. And now back to the Salina Post Sports Friday Night Preview. Welcome back in here on the Salina Post Sports Friday Night Preview Show presented by Kansas Wesleyan. It's time now for us to get you ready for the game of the week, which will take us tonight to Rock Creek and St. George, Kansas should be a good one as the homestanding Mustangs look to defend their turf against an emerging NCKL rival in Abilene. While Rock Creek may be new to the NCKL, they are certainly no stranger to winning as under head coach Shane Sieben, this squad has had a winning season each of the last four years and has turned a couple of really strong teams into a strong strong program that is always ready to contend in Class 3A. Earlier this week, we had an opportunity to catch up with Coach Sieben and get his thoughts on tonight's matchup. 
you guys are the new kids on the block here in the NCKL. It's, it was already a very competitive league. It gets even more competitive with you guys' addition. You know, how do you feel about just the comp- the level of competition you see across the board in this league? You know, we've played a lot of NCKL teams for a long time in, in all sports, really. Uh, so it's no different. I mean, yes, we, we now are in the league, but, uh, you know, we played everybody in the league last year except for one and Abilene. Uh, we, we played everybody else in, in, in all sports, really. Baseball, as a baseball coach, we've seen everybody. So um, for us, it's, it's nothing new. Uh, it's just now we're official members. So I think it just adds a little bit more excitement to those rivalries. And kind of taking a step back and looking at this from a broader perspective, you know, you've now led this program to four straight winning seasons. You've gotten it done with a number of different guys. But, you know, what would you say are kind of the mainstays of the culture here at Rock Creek that you see carry over from year to year? Uh, just like kids, we really put a lot of our kids to to set the precedent and set the culture of what is allowed and what is acceptable in our program. And I think that's just passed down from year to year. And I've got great assistant coaches. And they've done a good job as well. So uh, just the consistency of, of what we do and how we approach things and, and the consistency in our kids and what they expect out of everybody else on the team. Taking a look at your opponent here, Abilene comes into this contest at 2-1. and one. You know, when you watch the Cowboys on film, what are some of the biggest things that kind of stand out to you right away? A lot of things. That big up front, uh, that offensive line is as big. They're physical. They play hard. They play downhill. And they've got some speed on, on the edge. Uh, you know, both at quarterback. Uh, they've shown a little bit of both. Uh, number five and number six, both at quarterback. And both can beat you in a number of ways. And then Rock, Western Rock, uh, number one. He the kid can fly. Uh, they've got uh, they got some big time players. And they got a really physical edge back as well. They, they got a lot of pieces that can beat you. They do a good job executing their stuff. So they get the ball to play Baker's hands in a lot of different ways. You brought him up a moment ago, but I did want to ask you about Tegan Funston. You know, he, he's kind of a weird kid to try to scheme for because, again, he can come in, he can sling it at quarterback, he can take off on the ground. He's also the team's second leading receiver despite playing quarterback. You know, how do you prepare for an athlete like that? And how do you kind of keep him bottled up in all three facets of the offense? Yeah, that's a good question. If we can figure out how to bottle him up, I'll let you know. <laughs> he, can, he, he can beat you in a number of ways. And, and yeah, you don't know where he's going to line up. You don't know where one's going to line up. And I think that's the toughest thing is they present a lot of challenges in, in where they put guys and how they get guys the ball in space. So um, for us, it's it's really about just recognizing where guys are at and what they're trying to do. And, and then just playing true to your keys and, and playing assignment sound and physical football. One last question for you, Coach. Overall, what would you say are your biggest keys to this game? What does Rock Creek have to do to beat Abilene and roll to 3-1? and one? As always, got to win the turnover battle. I think that's the, the first and foremost is, is we got to win the turnover battle. And then uh, the biggest key is getting off the field on third down. So I think that's been a big thing for us defensively is uh, we've been us really in situations to get up at third long. That was our big Achilles heel, so to speak, against Wamigo. We had some third longs. They converted on some big pass plays and broke pocket, made some things happen. And that's something that we've worried has to be really good on. On the other side of the coin, Abilene comes in also at two and one and looking to cement their status as a true contender in the NCKL. It may be a stacked division and Clay Center may have taken the week one victory, but the Cowboys have an opportunity to bounce back and pick up what would be a huge win against a 3A powerhouse tonight in Rock Creek. Earlier this week, we sat down and chatted with Brad Nix, head coach of the Cowboys, to get his thoughts on the NCKL and on tonight's matchup. You know, the sense I got talking to a lot of people around the league, the NCKL was already stacked. Now it adds another great program in Rock Creek. You know, what was kind of your thought and feeling on the newest addition here to the NCKL in Rock Creek? Oh, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's, I, it really is. You know, you always want great teams to be in there. But yeah, I mean, you're right. I, we're already a pretty stacked league and, and we did not add a cream puff. Uh, not in football, not in any sport. Rock Creek is a, is a solid program in, in everything they do and um, you know, uh, they're, they're very well coached. Uh, you know, I've watched them play baseball and, and basketball and, you know, other sports track. I mean, they, they're, they're just solid in everything they do. And, um, especially in the football, uh, world, I mean, they're, they've got a great coach and, and for every, everything they do is just very disciplined and, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be tough. You know, it, it'll be a tough test for us on Friday and, um, they're, they're going to be good. They're going to be a force to be kind of reckoned with in, in the NCKL, not just this year, but in years to come. Well, and obviously in years to come too, but let's talk about this year's team. Rock Creek comes into this matchup at two and one, you know, when you watch the Mustangs on film, what are the biggest things that stand out to you right away? Just about the way that they play. 
just how fundamentally sound they are. Um, you know, it, we I was watching film over the weekend, and you know they line up exactly right. That you know every single time, and they're very consistent with what they do. And you can tell he brings back a lot of guys this, this year, and and uh, which is you know great for them. You know, maybe bad for us, but um, they're just very well coached, very fundamentally sound in everything that they do. Um, you know, defensively, you know they they really fly to the football and and they tackle well. You know, on the offensive side, you know they're they're a you're kind of a 50 50 team, you know, they like to throw it around, but they can run it as well. And, and so, um, you know, that's where the, like the last two weeks, they've been pretty run heavy teams. You know, this is going to be more of a 50 50. So, you know, it, it, it forces us to have to be more disciplined on our reads and, and what we do. And so, um, they're just, they're so fundamentally sound, um, with, with what they do and, and they're so very well coached. What are some of the biggest challenges that they present specifically on the defensive side? I know their offense gets a lot of attention a lot of the time, but when you look at Rock Creek's defense, you know, what challenges do they throw your way on that side? Um, I, I think just how they line up, um, you know, they adjust really, really well to, you know, cause we're a multi-formational team just like they are and just how well they adjust. And it seems like they're always in the right spot. Um, and, and they're athletic. I mean, they, they, they're athletic and they fly to the football yeah. Um, you know, they have good D line play, uh, good linebacker play and, and, uh, you know, they've got some athletes in the secondary. And so, uh, again, we're going to have to be on our a game and, and, uh, but our kids have had a great practice or you know, great practices this week. And so, uh, um, I'm excited for the opportunity, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're a great team. We have to play very well. Well, and last thing for you here, coach overall, what would you say are the biggest keys to the game for your team? What does Abilene have to do to keep the wins coming and pick up a third in a row? You know, I, I think we got to win the turnover battle. Uh, we always tell our kids, no, you know, no, no turnovers. Um, you know, I, I, I think we have to uh, not allow any big plays uh, from from them, um, and we we have to we have to block and tackle. I mean, it's football. We have, you know we're gonna have to be great on offense blocking and, and great on defense tackling. And so I think to me those are kind of the big the big ones. No no turnovers, block and tackle, and no big plays. So there you have it. Conversation with both Shane Steven of Rock Creek and Abilene's Brad Nix. Those two set to square off tonight. Kickoff at 7 o'clock p.m. And countdown to kickoff show presented by Billings Group hitting the airwaves at 640. We'll step away, but when we come back, we'll preview all three of the games you can tune into on the Salina Post Sports Network tonight. That conversation when we return. It's the Salina Post Sports Friday Night Preview Show. It's brought to you by our friends at Kansas Wesleyan. The Bennington State Bank proudly supports local sports and wants each student to know that their hard work and talent is noticed and appreciated. At Bennington State Bank, they care about local communities and are committed to fostering long-term relationships through the delivery of excellent customer service, integrity, and fairness. From helping local businesses to supporting community youth and nonprofits to helping you purchase your dream home or invest in your future, Bennington State Bank is here to help. Give them a call to experience exceptional banking with hometown service. Bennington State Bank, your trusted hometown bank. Member FDIC. We spend one-third of our lives working to build our wealth. With over 50 years of combined experience, Billings Group wants to be there to help manage yours. If you're planning for retirement or looking for financial coaching, then come see us on Westchester Drive, east of the YMCA, or visit our website at billingsgroup.com. Securities offered by registered representatives through private client services. Member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory products and services offered by investment advisory representatives through RFG Advisory. A registered investment advisor, RFG Advisory, Billings Group, and private client services are unaffiliated entities and now back to the Solana post sports friday night preview welcome back in here on the Solana post sports friday night preview show tyler henry and devin haney alongside you coverage of today's show brought to you by the good folks at kansas wesleyan and boy we have got a really fun slate of games we talked about some of the matchups coming up earlier in the show but now it's time to hone in on the games that you can tune in for live video and audio commentary coming your way on salina post and devin let's go ahead and start with a matchup between sacred heart and valley heights the knights Boy, just a brutal situation. They were a couple minutes away from securing their first win last week. They're going to have another shot at it against Valley Heights tonight, but got to put the memory of that one away. Yeah, kind of the hard luck story of Friday night with the weather and everything going through last week was the Sacred Heart Knights, especially with our attention here in the area. Of course, Sacred Heart looking for a win, scratching, clawing for a win. We're kind of looking at them. You know, they're, they show signs of improvement. They meet... Pleasanton and Council Grove get that game going. Then the weather comes in. It crashes through about midway through the second quarter. 
From my understanding, Sacred Heart was already up eight to nothing, looking to add on to that score and the final decision. And I imagine this has to be a mutual decision. I'm not sure I wasn't in those conversations, but imagine it has to be a mutual decision that it was going to be not made up and determined a no decision. So nothing will show up on the schedule. Sacred Heart will have a, a game short seven games now in the regular season for the Knights. And boy, a game that they could have won maybe last week against Pleasant and against the Blue Jays. Now Sacred Heart will go back to the same place that they played last year. They will play Valley Heights tonight. Valley Heights, a two and one team. They are a good football team. Sacred Heart played them there last year. So the Knights have a road trip in front of them. Of course, you can see that game on the Salina Post Sports Network. Right through Salina Post, just go check that out. It's a Valley Heights hosting Sacred Heart. And we've also got our game of the week coming your way later tonight. Again, 640 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff with live audio and video commentary. And it should be a really fun one. It's a new addition to the NCKL, but I think it's a really good one. Rock Creek has been, you know, especially in the world of football and boys basketball, they have been a real power around the state of Kansas in Class 3A. They are officially a new member of the NCKL this year, and they've already gone toe-to-toe with some of the conference's best. They really were in a battle against Wamigo just a week or just two weeks ago. They lost that one 20 to nothing. They bounced right back with a 57 to nothing win over Bonner Springs. They will be playing host to Abilene tonight, an Abilene team that is off to the exact same start to their season that they were a year ago. A tough loss to Clay Center, a big win in the battle for Dickinson County over Chapman, and then a big win over Concordia. They got that 37 to seven, and it really has been the Tag and Funston show. Ever since he has stepped in and taken over at quarterback, this team has just found another gear and new life offensively. The question is, will they have the firepower to match a 3A power in Rock Creek? We'll find out later tonight on our Salina Post Game of the Week. Of course, that turns us over, Devin, to a, a highly anticipated contest. Southeast of Saline's Trojans still undefeated and really the final leg of their brutal stretch here to open up regular season play. They've already taken care of the first two opponents. They've got another tough one waiting for them, though, tonight on the road, don't they? So let me parlay off the comment about Rock Creek and them joining the NCKL. Rock Creek, the last couple of years, have been on the regular season schedule for Southeast of Saline because of some league requirements and just kind of the different ways that the NCKL does things. Basically, from what I understand, Southeast of Saline either had to eliminate Rock Creek or Clay Center off their schedule. Coach Mitch Gebhardt told me he wanted to keep Clay Center. Rock Creek falls off. So then you insert a new opponent this year in the regular season for Southeast of Saline, taking the Rock Creek Mustang spot is the Kingman Eagles. A fairly new opponent for Southeast of Saline, but this is something that has been kind of festering into a rivalry here in just the last, this will be the third year now of them meeting. Of course, you look at the last two seasons, Kingman came to Southeast of Saline last year. Southeast of Saline ousted the Eagles. They got a little bit of revenge on the Eagles last year, 36 to 28 at Steve Fritz Field. The year before that, if you're a Southeast football follower, you'll remember it was a game in a bitter cold Kingman Eagles Stadium. Kingman won that game 28 to 22 in double overtime. The winner of that game would have went to the state title game. Of course, it was Southeast. They would have been playing in their backyard in Salina, but some things during the overtimes that happened during that game, Southeast feels like maybe they got cheated a little bit. I know Mitch Gebhardt is one to hold a grudge, if you would say. (laughs) And uh, when he got a chance to put Kingman on his regular season schedule, he jumped at the opportunities to know Kingman and, and Southeast will play each other the next two years. Tonight, it will be Southeast traveling to Kingman. Yeah, it should be a really fun one. Again, like I said, we've got some really good matchups coming your way, and they don't stop on Friday because you can come right back here on KINA this Saturday for a little bit of college ball. Kansas Wesley off to a bit of a slow start, but they've gone through the meat of their schedule. They played 16th ranked Evangel. They've taken down or they've played 21st ranked Southwestern, and they just took on friends, also ranked 21st in the nation coming in this week. They fell in that game by just two. They're going to have another tough task on Saturday as they take on the Bethel Threshers, a team that will enter at a perfect four and O, oh, but it's a great chance for Kato to get back on the right side of things, to get back to two and three and to really start rattling off some wins. They'll have that game at home at JRI stadium. It's a six o'clock kick. It's a five o'clock pregame, the catalog countdown to kickoff show. And you can tune in for the coverage of that one right here on K I N a that will just about wrap it up for us. But one last time for Tyler Henry and for Devin Haney, this has been the Salina post sports Friday night preview show presented by Kansas Wesleyan. We'll be back with another show next week but when we return it's countdown to kickoff presented by lnl advisors southeast of saline and kingman pregame for that game is next you're locked in high school sports coverage right here on kina